Hey there, how's it going summoners? My name is Nathan Ng and I'm back with a new set of builds for the latest patch 12.18. This is the patch Worlds is set to be played on, so it's definitely an important one. Aside from its competitive importance, it included a solid set of changes that have yielded new builds for all 5 roles. Make sure to stay tuned and also subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this. Now let's get the video started. Like always, we'll begin with the top lane. Our very first build is going to be for Ramus Top. This one is sort of insane and I think once you hear what it is, you'll probably agree with me. For starters, you'll be running the runes Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Shield Bash, Second Wind, Attack Speed, Armor, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. In cases where your teams lack shielding, you can replace Shield Bash with any other rune in the Resolve Tree. Lethal Tempo is going to be your keystone though, as you're opting for an aggressive kill everything playstyle, which doesn't sit right with me. For items, build Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Rune King, Thornmail, Force of Nature, and Demonic Embrace. Blade of the Rune King paired with the Lethal Temple suffices for basic attack damage, while adding in aggressive defensive options help make Ramus a tanky DPS threat. It's worth noting that players run Ignite with the setup, allowing for some incredible kill pressure, and even 1v2 potential if he gets ganked with the big minion wave by his side. Second, we have another aggressive tank build for Tom Kench. These builds work for these two tanks because they deal solid basic attack damage and naturally make good use of attack speed. Like Ramus, Tom also runs Lethal Temple as his keystone. His other runes include Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. For the items, build Blade of the Rune King, Defensive Boots, Frostfire Gauntlet, Titanic Hydra, Death Stance, and either Spirit Visage or Randuins based on the enemy team's comp. This build deals ridiculous amounts of damage without sacrificing much durability. Before moving forward, I just want to make a quick mention of our coaching staff over at ProGuides.com. With the meta constantly changing, it can be easy to get confused over how to play or who to play. Our expert coaches are not only friendly but knowledgeable and can help you rank up, so contact one of them today. That wraps up our top lane build, so let's take a look at the screen for a quick recap of them. Next up, let's run through a couple of new jungle builds. For starters, we'll start with the build for Maokai. Following even more adjustments, Maokai jungle is ready to take the rift and begin dominating. We already saw him seeing more play in patch 12.17, but with the buffs this patch, he's set to perform even better than before. For his runes, take Aftershock, Fawn of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. His items are Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Winter's Approach, Spirit Visage, Frozen Heart, and Demonic Embrace. It's a standard tank build, but with his recent adjustments, that's how he shines now. Maokai deals a surprising amount of damage, and Aftershock enables him as a powerful frontliner and can lead the charge for his entire team. This build also incorporates a ton of ability haste, allowing him to have access to his ultimate more often, as well as more crowd control during longer team fights. Another champion that was recently buffed was Nasus. With a much stronger wither, his team fighting utility as well as 1v1 power has increased significantly, thus we're going to be seeing him pick slightly more in the jungle. By no means are his ganks bad either. Nasus's wither is suffocating and an effective way of punishing overextended foes. Of course, since Nasus jungle doesn't really have a lane opponent, it'll be much harder to bully him and stop him from gradually scaling up. For his runes, take Fleet Footwork, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Unflinching, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Divine Sunderer, Defensive Boots, Death Stance, Gargoyle, Stone Plate, and either Force of Nature or Randuin's Omen and Thornmail. That covers jungle builds, so we'll put them up on the screen for y'all. Take another look at the recap and let's move on to the mid lane next. You're gonna think it's crazy, but more and more Korean players are playing Rakan mid. Like in the past, he's an incredible roaming mid laner who brings impressive burst damage, powerful ganks, and potent tower diving potential. The game plan with this build is to apply a ton of gank pressure with the help of a jungler. Rakan's burst damage is impressive, making him pretty good at trading damage with his opponent. After pushing in side lanes, he's able to absolutely destroy side laners with his powerful crowd control, as well as the surprising damage output AP Rakan brings. For his runes, take Predator, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. It's worth mentioning that Predator doesn't only have to be used while roaming. It's a great tool to use when you're setting up for ganks in the mid lane when your teammates are on the way to assist you. His items are Everfrost, Sorcerer's Shoes, Zanya's Hourglass, Void Staff, Rabidon's Death Cap, and Banshee's Veil. It's definitely an odd pick to see, but I am personally a fan of the diversity. Also, we're about halfway through the video, so I want to take a moment to ask you a question of the day. What balance changes have made you the happiest to see in the recent patches? I'm personally glad they rebalanced Maokai the way they did. Seeing him played as a tank again feels right, and it's nice not to have to deal with full AP Maokai support saplings. Let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's continue on with the video. Our next mid lane build is for Kled. He's a known menace for his ridiculous burst damage, and because he can be pretty difficult for most mid lane champions to kill. 
He's great at setting up terror dives, making jungle ganks absolutely terrifying to deal with. One thing that we're seeing more players do is building Eclipse on him. It's not surprising because it sort of does everything. It grants Clad some lethality for burst damage, gives him an extra shield to work with, and also adds some extra mobility at the start of fights. That being said, let me run through the entire build. For the runes, take Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Sand, Sudden Impact, Treasure Hunter, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Eclipse, Defensive Boots, Revenous Hydra, Bly Cleaver, Death Stance, and either Mob Memorias or Guardian Angel. That covers our mid lane build, so let's talk about the bottom lane ones. In the bottom lane, it might sound odd, but we're beginning to see Graves picked more and more often. He's an aggressive pick that brings a ton of damage to the table. He's also a little bit harder for enemies to kill, as he's able to use his E to gradually build up his defensive stats throughout the fight. What makes it even harder for them is the fact that Graves players usually run Summoner Exhaust for an extra layer of safety. Over the duration of the Summoner spell, divers who jump into the fray too early have to take a huge risk, as they're going to be taking a huge beating from Graves in close quarters. That being said, let's run through the runes first. You'll take Lethal Tempo, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Lethal Tempo isn't common, but add some solid DPS once you reach the max stacks. For items, build Gale Force, Defensive Boots, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, Death Stance, and either Lord Dominic's Regards or Guardian Angel. Again, Graves is not easy to kill. A pair of Steel Caps or Mercury Treads along with Death Stance gives him enough defensive stats to survive virtually any Assassin or Bruiser's burst damage. When chasing down enemies, he can use Gale Force to ensure that they can't escape him, taking full advantage of the bonus movement speed, the active effects, and even his ease slow cooldown. Another new build that we're starting to see more often is Uction Support. It's essentially a low econ build that still lets him deal some solid damage. At the same time, he does provide excellent utility as he's able to revive his teammates with his retribution kills. I'm still not over that, by the way. In a way, this pressures enemies to try to want to kill him first, but unfortunately for them, he's usually not the main source of damage. Within a well-rounded team, Auction serves as a hidden final boss that enemies need to be wary of. For his runes, take Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Zombie Ward, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Press the Attack is usually what players run on him anyway, but it's convenient that it allows Auction to increase his entire team's damage output against a specific target. It's important that you take Treasure Hunter as well. Since you're playing support Auction, you'll need that extra gold to supplement him, allowing him to build more items and stay relevant as every champion starts scaling. His items are Spectral Sickle, Eclipse, Boots of Mobility, Umbral Glaive, The Collector, and Lord Dominic's Regards. Finally, we have a bot lane combo to talk about. It's a simple one with a huge gimmick, and that's what makes it great for duo Q. The combo is Syndra and Blitzcrank. What makes it so special is that Syndra can use her W to pull a minion, clearing the path for Blitzcrank to land a hook. Following it, you're able to utilize their insane burst damage and CC to one-shot an enemy. For Syndra's setup, you'll want to run Teleport. This will allow you to quickly recall and replenish your health and mana, and also allow you to quickly spend your gold and try to pick up kills with an item lead. Take the runes Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Transcendence, Mana Flow Band, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Ludens Tempest, Sorcerer's Shoes, Shadow Flame, Rabadon Zedcap, Zanya's Hourglass, and Void Staff. Blitzcrank's runes are Glacial Augment, Hexa Clash Traption, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, Second Wind, Unflinching, Adaptive Force, and Double Defense. His items are Relic Shield, Boots of Mobility, Even Shroud, Zeke's Convergence, Knight's Vow, and Wardstone. Those are the bottom lane builds, so take another look at the screen for a final recap of them. And that will be all for our Patches Korean Builds video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to share any of your thoughts that you have in the comments below, and also check out the description if you'd like to join our Discord. You'll be the first to know about any future giveaways or events that we host, so don't miss out. Best of luck on your games, everybody. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.